This morning, I want to continue in the series that I've titled The Helper. This is a series about the life and work of the Holy Spirit. Next Sunday, we're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, which is really the birthday uh, of the church. And I believe it's for this reason that the Lord for some time has laid on my heart this series about the work and ministry of, of the Holy Spirit, and we've t entitled it The Helper. Last week, we took time to speak to you about the dove. Today, I want to take the time to talk to you about the oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. My text today is taken from the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. The whole passage is verses 1 to 13. But in that passage, God tells Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. And then later on, and from that day, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in a powerful way. Oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit speaks to us of anointing. All throughout the Old Testament, oil was always not only a symbol of the work of the Holy Spirit, but was used in the anointing process. First, it was used to anoint for service. Look at Saul. Uh, Saul is phenomenally interesting. He is everything that the world, and Israel for that matter, wanted in a political leader. You see, God wanted to manage Israel by what were called judges. They judged Israel, they called Israel back to God, back to repentance, and as long as the different judges were around, Israel would serve the Lord, and when that particular judge died, Israel would drift away from God. Israel then would, God would raise up another judge, and that judge would come in and again call Israel back to repentance, back to God. Israel would tear down all the false idols, and the worship of Almighty God was, was restored, and, and, and Israel would then live in, in abundance and, and joy. But Israel began to look around, and they said, we want to be like other nations. God has never wanted or called his children, his people, whether Israel or the church, to be like others. In fact, God wants to continue to make us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special group, because of his blessing and his anointing. You know, the anointing in the Old Testament was, first of all, for service. People that were anointed for service were first anointed for service to God. In fact, God came to remove his anointing from Saul because Saul had come to first serve his own interests. I've kind of joked over the years, Saul was the first one to coin what Ford has come to say. Well, I've got a better idea, God. And Saul came to serve his own interests instead of God's interests. Saul disobeyed God, and there is a tragic scene 
in the book of 1 Samuel that we won't go into today. But when God removed his anointing from Saul to be king, that's when, in 1 Samuel 16, God said to Samuel, why are you grieving for Saul? I've, I've removed my anointing from him. Go down to the household of Jesse, and, and I'll show you who the next king is to be. And Samuel basically said, uh, 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 I can't do that. Saul will hear about it, and he'll kill me. And God said, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of you. Just go to Jesse's house and say, I'm here to make a sacrifice, and I want all your boys. Uh, and they did that. And one by one, the sons of Jesse passed before Samuel. And God would whisper in Samuel's ear, no, 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 that's, that's not the one. Oh, he may look the part, but God doesn't look like man looks. God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outside. God looks on the inside. And all the sons came by, and each one, God whispered in Samuel's ear, no, no, that's not the one. Finally, uh, Samuel turned to Jesse and said, is that all your sons? And Jesse said, well, I've got the youngest. He's out watching the sheep. And Samuel said, uh, go get him. We're not even going to sit down until he gets here. So they brought Samuel, uh, they brought David in. Oh, he was good looking, but he was the youngest. Uh, they sent him off to watch the sheep. He wasn't all, all that important. But God saw David's heart. And God whispered in Samuel's ear, that's the one because I see his heart. And Samuel took the horn of oil and poured it on the top of David. And David was anointed to be God's king over Israel. One of the things that I want to get across to you is that in as we move towards Pentecost Sunday, more than anything, I want to have the oil of the Holy Spirit poured over me. I want the oil of his Holy Spirit to pour over each one of you and pour over New Beginnings Church for God's anointing to first serve God and then to serve people by leading people in, in God's ways. This is why I prayed as, as people see how we interact with one another, how we interact on the job, how we interact in the community, how we interact in the neighborhood, how we interact in our families. Do they sense these people have been with God? That's what was said about the early church. They may not have been the upper class, they may have been just fishermen, but people took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. There was an anointing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, I want to talk about the anointing of the oil in uniting us with Jesus. Acts 10, 37 and 38 says, you know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. And then 1 John 2.20 says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. The truth is embodied in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus did not do anything by the power of his deity. 
After the baptism, as we have read, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Why? Because God, the Holy Spirit, was anointing him, and God was with him. Jesus did everything that he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he said to his disciples, it's good for you to, that I'm going to go away, because I'm going to send you another one just like me. And greater works than these will you do, because I'm going to my Father, and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that in preaching this message, that there will grow a hunger deep within the depths of your soul to cry out for God, for His divine and Holy Spirit anointing, for life, for ministry, in so many ways. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit, with His oil, is given as anointing for unity. Because oil is not only a symbol of the Holy Spirit, we all know that oil is a lubricant. You know, none of us want to run out of gas. But we can, pro if we do, we can find somebody to take us and get us to a gas station. We can get some gas and pour it in, and off we go. But if we lose the oil and our engine in our car freezes, we're not going anywhere. But we're going to have to have a new engine because oil is that lubricant. Psalm 133, verses 1 to 3 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. There are some dimensions that I want to talk to you about the lubricant of the Holy Spirit, the lubrication of the Holy Spirit. First, uh, in your marriage. On Mother's Day, when I interviewed John and Krista, and we honored Krista as our Mother of the Year. Krista said some things. She said, you know, John and I are praying for the marriages in our church. And I want you to know I'm, I'm praying for your marriage. If you listen to any news at all, you know that divorce rates are spiking People are getting agitated, frustrated, angry, upset. Families fight. Marriages fight. I'm praying for the oil of the Holy Spirit in your marriage. You know, there are two kinds of triangles in marriage. One is an unholy triangle. It's either two men and one woman, or two women, and one man. Sometimes it can be a man, and a woman, and a job. Sometimes it can be a man, and a woman, and a family. The Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave unto his wife, and the two will become one. But I want to talk to you about a second kind of triangle, which is a holy triangle. That 
holy triangle is made up of a man, a woman, and their God. And the closer each partner in marriage gets to God, the closer they get to one another. In the privacy of your own home, are you struggling in your marriage? If God works your marriage out, you're going to need God. If you two don't allow God to work out your marriage, you both are going to need God to help you, to heal you, to help you recover. Can I tell you in this process, don't forget the holy triangle. No matter what happens, you're going to need God. So start drawing closer to God. And if both of you will start drawing closer to God, you'll find yourself growing closer to each other. Same principle is true. I'm praying for the oil of the Holy Spirit in, in your family. Mom and dad, kids. James 4, 8 says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. You know, later on we're going to talk about harsh words. And I know that their marriage takes work. Families take work. It's easy to shoot our mouths off, especially when we're frustrated and we're hurt and we're uncertain and we're afraid. But instead of verbalizing all of that to a spouse, can I get you to cry out to God and pray for the oil of His Holy Spirit to bathe your heart and your life and your emotions. You know, when the oil, when your life is full of the oil of the Holy Spirit, you will find it much easier to do the will of God. It won't be such a struggle. Fourthly, I want to talk to you about the oil of the Holy Spirit for the church. Philippians 4, 2 says, quoting the Apostle Paul, I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. God prayed, Jesus prayed for us, his disciples. And part of the prayer was, Father, make them one, as you and I, Father, are one. The biggest reason that I pray for the oil of the Holy Spirit to be poured out on us individually as a church is so that we can speak the same things, and be of the same mind in the Lord. It's so easy to be concerned with, with being right. Being right in whatever dimension is never the key to the success of the church. The key to the success of the church is being of one heart and one mind with the oil of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, and He molds us and blends us and unifies us. You know, God judged the world once, many times, but in particular once God looked down and saw that the whole world spoke one language. They had come together for an unholy purpose. God said, 
scatter, be fruitful, multiply the earth. Man said, oh no, we want to get together. We want to come together. We, and, and, and we have our goals. We have, we have our plans. We want to do what we want. And we're going to build a tower that exceeds to heaven and we'll be like God. And God looked down and said, even with an unholy purpose, an unrighteous person, if they all speak the same thing, nothing will be impossible for them to do. And so God came down and confused their language. And then they couldn't communicate. So they had to scatter. You know, this is difficult because there's nobody I know that gets this right 100% of the time. Proverbs 15.1 says this, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But harsh words stir up anger. How do we talk to one another? How do we talk to our family? Do we speak out of frustration, fear, anxiety? Or do we speak out of kindness, gentleness, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. I pray that the oil of the Holy Spirit will be poured over your mind, over your heart, over your spirit, and that you will find it increasingly easier to speak a gentle answer instead of a harsh word. And as we trust the Holy Spirit and let the oil flow over us, watch him lubricate and make our family and our church life really work together for his honor and his glory. There's one more part about oil that I want to talk about. And it's this, there really is the individual responsibility for each of us to maintain the anointing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, David had to wait for Samuel to come and pour the oil over his head. In the New Testament, on a totally individual basis, I don't have to wait for some prophet, some special pastor, some gifted whatever, to come and either lay hands on or whatever. I can just say in the words of that old song, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up, Lord, and make me whole. In, in Matthew, the 25th chapter, there's a whole uh, parable that Jesus tells about five foolish virgins and five wise virgins, and they were all together waiting for the bridegroom to come. And when they got word that the bridegroom was going to come, they were to grab their lamps full of oil and light them and go out and usher the bridegroom in. And the word came. The bridegroom's here. The five wives, uh, the five wise virgins grabbed their lamps full of oil, and the five foolish ones said, Ah, our lamps are out of oil. Can, can you share with us? And, and the five wise said, No, nah, there may not be enough for us and you. And the five foolish said, Well, we'll go buy our own then. By the time they were going, 
to get their own oil. The bridegroom came, the five wise virgins went out, lit the way for the bridegroom to come in, and finally the five foolish ones, when they got the oil, came in and knocked on the door. There was no more room. This says to me, I'm responsible for the oil of the Holy Spirit in my life. God is not a respecter of persons. He wants to pour His oil on you and in you. And if you're a candidate for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I ask you today, Pour me full of your oil. Holy Spirit, I open my life. I open my body. I open my mind. I open my mouth for the anointing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I pray that families would come together right now in this moment and pray as a family. Holy Spirit, pour the oil in our marriage. Pour the oil in our family. And Lord, I pray that you would pour out the oil in and through new beginnings Fill us, Holy Spirit, with your life, with your love, with the oil that brings about that kind of unity and harmony that honors the Lord Jesus Christ and that you want us to have. Oh, Jesus, send the Holy Spirit with oil. And we thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to take this time to, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed with me, would you go onto the website, fill out a communication card, tell me what happened, tell me what happens this week, communicate with us. I want to take a special time to say thank you so much. So many of you have been so kind and gracious and generous. You've given through mail. You've given on the website. Thank you. God is blessing us in, in, in wonderful ways. And as leadership, we are seeking, Lord, when and how do you want us to open the building? Our church is not closed. Our building may be closed, but our church isn't. We get to get, get together like this. We can meet. We can pray with. We can pray for one another. As I said in my letter, use FaceTime. Zoom one another. Call each other on the phone. Communicate. Encourage one another. And be a blessing. And now, may the good Lord bless and keep you, especially during this final closing song by Reggae and Mary Francis. God bless you.